Okay, this mic on my shirt looks so silly, but let's just roll with it. All right, so I've made a little makeshift operation here in my little studio slash work from home office space slash whatever you want to call it to explain to you Grease Pencil. After spending $60 and browsing YouTube for countless tutorials, I thought it might be helpful for a beginner to explain to another beginner, aka you, Grease Pencil 101 from a beginner perspective. And in case you're wondering, these are some of the things that I've been able to create after a week of learning Grease Pencil. And one big thing to note here, and particularly when it comes to Grease Pencil, is this is the one thing that I definitely recommend having a tablet for. Thank you Wacom for sending me one. I've been waiting ages for this. This video is not sponsored though. Any tablet will do, honestly. They're normally even anywhere from $50 to like $200 I'd say, so it's a pretty decent price range, but definitely worth it if you want to add a pop of style and customization to your workflow. As you can see, my setup is very simple. I literally just have my laptop and my tablet and my pen, and that's all I'm using. Let's learn Grease Pencil together. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting off with our bare bones 3D model, just a little bit of texture and shading, and that's about it. But yeah, here's my shader setup. I'll link everything that I use down below. So there's two ways to go about Grease Pencil. The first way is just by adding a collection line art, which you don't need a tablet for. You can do this for any model, and honestly, what this really is, is if you go into your camera view, all you have to do is Shift A, come over to Grease Pencil, and add a collection line art. And now, as you can see, we have a beautiful outline in our render. Now, the only caveat is if I move away from this camera view, you'll see that it's only outlined what you can see in your camera view. Everything else here, you don't have outlines for. So it's very camera specific. And if you want to be able to animate and move around your 3D model, it might ruin the magic a little bit for your grease pencil. But it is still very customizable. So if you come down to your material, you can go ahead and customize it by adjusting the color. When it comes to Grease Pencil, the interface is only slightly different. So you'll see this little squiggly line here in our properties panel. And this is where you can layer on your Grease Pencil lines. Right now, we don't really have to worry about this. If you come over to the modifier properties, you can actually change the line thickness here a little bit. You can just adjust the thickness as you want. All right, so I'm going to hide this in our viewport for now. Now let's move on to the second way of using Grease pencil which is drawing in through your tablet or your mouse so all you have to do is if you want to add in a grease pencil object press shift a go down to grease pencil and add in a blank so we don't see anything right now in our viewport but in our scene collection you can see that we have grease pencil 0.001 once you have a grease pencil added you can come over here and switch over to draw mode this is the main viewport that we'll be using when you use Grease Pencil. You'll see that we have all of these little items on the left-hand side, which honestly, you don't really need to pay attention to right now. These are just for creating shapes down the line. Now let's actually try to draw on the object here and see what happens. So once you draw, I'm just gonna scribble here. You can see that we have a Grease Pencil drawing on our object. Now you can see that there's a little bit of a gap so let me introduce you to some of the drawing modes in Grease Pencil. Once you understand this, everything will become so much easier. Up top here, it says surface. And this drawing mode is essentially what allows us to draw on the surface of any object that we have in our viewport. So if I click into this, you can see that we have a couple of different options. We have origin, 3D cursor, surface, and stroke. Now, the one that I use the most often is 3D cursor and surface. Now, if you're using surface like I am here, you need to lower the offset because what happens when the offset is high is that there's a gap between your drawing and your object. So I'll lower it to something like 0.50 and let's draw again this time. All right, and if I hover around, you can see that it's actually on the object now, whereas this one is kind of floating on the surface and there's a gap. Also, if you're using a pencil and you have two options, I set the bottom button for navigating around so that I can move around with my pen easily. And the second one is the undo button so I can just easily undo instead of having to go in and erase. Speaking of eraser, if you come down here to the left, you can see where it says erase. And this is what you can use to erase your lines. And there's of course different erase modes, but we're starting off simple here so no need to complicate things. 
So that's the first mode for drawing, which is surface mode drawing. Now I'm going to set the cursor close to the center. And now, instead of having it on surface mode, we are going to have our stroke placement on the 3D cursor. When you want to draw on a plane, instead of drawing on the curved surface of an object, you want these planes. So when you come up here, you can see that to the right of your 3D cursor, we have all these different options. Our first one here is view, which kind of just changes here like this. And then if you go like this, and then if you go like this, so now they're all in this rotated plane depending on where we were viewing it from. Now, if I switch it to front, it'll automatically set it to our front axis. So if I draw a smiley face here, you can see that even if I move it, it's not going to change. And if I draw here, it'll still be based on the front axis. This is the same for the rest of it. We have the side and top. If you want to move over your cursor, you can see that our drawing plane has also moved over to our cursor. If you do it to the origin, pretty much just at the origin, but I don't really use it all that much. I mostly just use the 3D cursor and the surface one. All right, so now that we know how to actually draw on our 3D model, now let's talk about the textures because this is the fun part. This is the part that everybody loves. Let's go back into draw mode. So now to really understand how all of the different grease pencils, how they all work together, we have to look at this little tab here that has this green data swirly swirl and essentially this is kind of like our scene collection but for grease pencil because they're their own little ecosystem within the body of blender here so you can see here that we have one grease pencil layer you can rename this and let's just say i'm going to call this smiley face one enter so with our surface selected i'm going to go ahead and draw a smiley face on our coffee one thing that I always do whenever I draw something in grease pencil, I'm talking about it like I've been always doing grease pencil for life. One thing I always like to do is I like to uncheck lights because I notice that it makes a difference in the material and unchecking lights just makes it a lot better and more opaque. Now let's say we want to add in another layer. I'm gonna add in another layer up top here with the check button and let's rename this to smiley face two. Now that I have another layer, I'm going to go here into materials and add in another material. Let's hit new and I'm also just going to rename this because it's good practice or so they say, smiley face two. So now we have a new material and I'm going to go ahead and just give it a nice light blue-ish purple. So now that we have this selected here, you can see that it's on top of our black grease pencil outline. That's how the layers work. So if I were to select this and I were to move it down, now you can see that our original smiley face one is on top of our second smiley face. Now the next most important thing that I've learned here is this fill button. Honestly, if I've taken away anything from my hours of learning grease pencil is that you can customize the stroke and the fill, and that's 99% of what you need to know about grease pencil. I'm being so serious. So if I click fill, you can see that it fills in our entire line here. And we can also change the color here of our fill. So now we can go in and anything that we have selected, it will fill it up with this blue and white outline. So you can add in something like a heart or a star, but you can kind of see how it works. Now, if you go ahead and you decide to change your materials, even though it's already been drawn in, it will actually be dynamic and change as you change your colors or your materials or et cetera. So if I select new and I select this one, and let's say I want a, maybe a green. Let's say I don't want a stroke, but I do want to fill. Then again, you can see that as I draw it, I will get the fill, but I won't have the stroke. Whereas if I click the stroke here, you can see that our outline is now there. All right, and that's low key all you have to know about grease pencil. It's pretty crazy the things that you can do with knowing just a little bit of it. I would highly encourage you to try it out, especially if you're looking to create stylized 2D illustrations in Blender. And maybe if you like this video, I'll create a part two. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.